Hey everyone, it's Matt. Today we're taking a look at the Ring Door View Cam. It's a battery powered video doorbell that replaces the peephole on your door. Now with no preconceived notions, I haven't installed this, haven't opened it up. What I can say is, given that it's battery powered, I can see this being a good alternative to having an actual smart doorbell. If you've seen some of my previous reviews or read some of my previous blogs, you know one of the challenges about having an actual smart doorbell is that it requires a lot more continuous voltage um, from your doorbell chime itself. And if you have an older home, you might not have enough voltage running and you run into things like uh, the doorbell uh, current, you know, um, constantly hammering and making noise or the video feed not even working properly, not even being able to capture um, enough power to continuously power. Um, one of the issues with Ring, for example, is that if you don't have enough power going to it, the chime actually stops halfway and it doesn't always start filming. Um, so this might be the alternative to that. If you have a peephole on your door, this might be a good alternative for uh, those of you that live in condos or apartments where you don't have outside doorbells. People just tend to knock on your door, uh, but you have a peephole. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to show you what's inside and then we'll get to the installation. Um, it does say that everything is included inside the box. I don't think I'm going to need any additional wiring or any additional magic, uh, but I'm sure there's a battery pack inside. So let's take a quick look and see if I have to charge that. All right, so let's just open up the box here. Looks like we've got our standard instruction pack. Okay, so this looks a lot like the, um, you know, your standard uh, Ring Video Doorbell, except I'm assuming that there's a piece that goes through. Yeah, there's a piece that goes through to your peephole there. This is the backing unit, I would assume. The door view kit itself. Okay, there's the battery pack. We'll take a closer look at the battery pack. And some other pieces here. Door view kit itself. And there's some wiring. It looks like there's something inside there. This is the battery pack right here. It's uh, micro USB rechargeable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab a battery pack and I'm gonna plug it in um, and we're gonna check to see how charged this is out of the box. Looks like there's some LED indicators right here. So um, let me just grab a battery pack and we'll put it on to charge. So when you come face to face with your peephole, uh, a couple of things might happen. First of all, this might be a, it might have been on the door for many years and it might be tightened in place. It might have been uh, painted or gummed around. Um, mine's going to be fairly easy to remove just because I have done uh, peephole cam reviews before. But if yours is difficult, don't worry. Ring included a little tool where you can simply just slide it into the grooves of your peephole to loosen things up. And from there, you can just use your hands the rest of the way if you need to, or you can just continue using the tool. So remember the people does come in two pieces. It will slide out through this piece that screws into the inside piece. So just make sure that you're opening it from, uh, that you have eyes on the outside piece as well as the inside piece when you're pulling things off. With the peephole removed, next step is to take the outer housing and to feed it through the peephole itself. Make sure you don't take this piece of tape off uh, just because that is holding this piece of wiring tight to the whole device. Um, you're going to need to connect that to the inner hub and you definitely don't want to damage that. I'm going to feed that through. Now, um, some of you might end up having a bigger opening than this and that's okay. Um, one of the pieces that you saw as I was unboxing is actually a little adapter kit that will hold this tighter into place if you find that there's a lot of movement. So you're just gonna slide the inside assembly on like this. And you'll see it's all kind of coming together. The next thing that we're gonna worry about here is this wire. So you're gonna pull this out of the top housing. Like that than I was expecting. And then we're gonna connect it to this piece here. So I'm just gonna put the phone down and just get this connected. So what you wanna do is make sure that you pull this so that there's no slack. The last part of this is that you wanna take this part and attach it to this part of the inner assembly. 
you might need the ring tool here just to make it uh, tighter. You're definitely going to need both hands though because you'll want to hold this down with one hand and then use this with the other hand. So again, I'm just going to put the camera down and literally it just it's just going to fit in there. So here's what that looks like. You can actually interchange these two steps if you want. You can put this piece and plug that into the assembly and screw it in. Um, and then you can press that and pull this down if you want, whichever makes it easier. Just make sure when you are putting the two pieces together, you're keeping an eye on the fact that this might shift a little bit during the installation. So when you are tightening it, making sure that this is level and that this is straight as well. And the final step is that we're gonna take the battery. This is gonna take a couple hours to charge, so expect that you'll need to leave this on for a couple hours. Um, in case you don't have a micro USB cable, you might have seen me talk about wiring in the first video, the little orange wire, that's actually a micro USB cable. So you're gonna slide your battery in like this. Okay, and now we're gonna take it to the setup phase. So don't put the cover on just yet. Uh, you've, got a, you've got the software setup to do now. Setup on this is pretty simple. You just have to grab the QR code included in the instructions and scan it to get started. Make sure you sign up for a Ring account too. If you already have an existing Ring device, you don't need to download a new app. Just select to install a new device on the existing app and select doorbell. From there, follow the on-screen prompts to get started. Like most devices like this, you jump aboard its local Wi-Fi and then connect it to yours. Is the Wi-Fi connection strong by your front door? If it's not, I'm going to show you later on why that matters. I should add that the device... Uh, it does come with a free trial of Ring's cloud storage service, which is the only way you can record your visitors at the front door and save that footage. You can access a live view and then record live footage at your door, which is how I'm going to show you what the video looks like and do that off your, off your uh, smartphone, but you won't capture audio that way. Anyway, the microphone itself is really sensitive, and it's not that bad. It's, it's a little bit raspy at times, could be a little bit hissy. Um, but when I listen in and talk to a guest at the door, I can sort of hear the kids playing at the park like 50 feet away. That's pretty crazy. Needless to say, that means that it is going to pick up a lot of background noise too, like the rain. Here's what the capture footage looks like during the day. There's an HDR setting that allows you to capture clearer night footage, but it also decreases battery life. Here's me at night. Night vision is really clear, but I don't have the strongest Wi-Fi connection at my front door, and you can tell here because of the frame rate drops. It's a great case for you to get a range extender or mesh Wi-Fi system to boost that signal. Shout out to my August doorbell notifications for making a cameo appearance in that video too. At any time, you can use the app to do things like check on connection speed and battery life, adjust your notifications so you can pick up things like rings only, rings and knocks, or rings, knocks, and motion, set multiple users, adjust motion sensitivity, and even create privacy zones. Privacy zones will allow you to black out camera recording in certain areas, which might be a good idea if you live in an apartment or condo building and want to protect your neighbor's privacy by immediately capturing only who or what's in front of you. I've finished running all the firmware updates and there's really only one thing to do but take this thing for a spin. Um, before I ring it, just to let you know, you should make sure that you turn notifications on in the app, otherwise you're never going to know who's at your front door. Um, so make sure that as you're setting the app up, as you're setting your Ring account up, you do turn your phone's notifications on, otherwise this isn't going to work properly. So I am getting a notification that somebody is at my front door. I'm going to show you what this looks like in the app now. Well, we've got the whole thing working, but there's one last thing we need to do, and that's to put the housing back on. Housing's back on, in case we want to do it the old fashioned way. And we're all done. One thing I should mention in closing is that because Ring is owned by Amazon, uh, if you have a working Amazon Echo, you can simply say something to the effect of Alexa, show me my ring door view cam, and it'll show you a live view of, of what's happening at your front door. Now, this only took about five or ten minutes to install. Shouldn't take you much more if you know what to do, and then you'll have this working in no time. This is the ring door view cam now available at Best Buy and online at bestbuy.ca. I'm Matt. Please uh, check back for more reviews like this and subscribe to the channel for more smart home technology and uh, things of that sort. We'll see you next time.